They say to understand a person, you have to walk a mile in their shoes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. One year ago, I spent a week behind bars living as an inmate in Texas. I found a system which incarcerates more people than anywhere else on earth, straining at the seams. I am looking forward to getting my ass out of here and hopefully won't be seeing this place again, but who knows? Now I'm in North Carolina, heading back to jail. Only this time, I'll be working as a guard. I knew going into jail as an inmate, I'd faced issues that I couldn't even imagine. I know that this is gonna turn up and, and throw up some real challenging things within me in terms of the way that I see the importance of the role and also who takes on that role with law enforcement. I'm looking forward to this as much as I'm nervous about it. <laughs> What's it like working inside a system that's operating under unprecedented scrutiny and is finding it harder than ever to recruit staff? You throw into the mix corruption and you throw into the mix issues with uh, uh, race relations and racism. Who are the good guys and who are the bad guys really? And what side am I on going in? Guilford County Jail in Greensboro, North Carolina, houses up to 900 inmates. People have been picked up on charges ranging from misdemeanors to murder. Within these walls, they await trial, guarded by a staff of over 200 correctional officers. And for the next week, yours truly. Corporal Jackson. Hello. How you doing? Reggie. Corporal Jackson. Nice to, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Reggie. How you doing? Good, good. Before my first shift, I'm meeting Corporal Jackson, the jail's recruitment officer, who interviews every new candidate. All right, Mr. Yates, we're gonna go over some questions. Uh, the first question I wanna know, how do you feel about working all night from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m.? I'd like to think I'd be fine in that environment. We have to deal with individuals as they come off the street. Oftentimes they're uh, on drugs or they're intoxicated, uh, some homeless people. Um, you're gonna have to search these individuals, which requires you putting hands on people who have uh, not bathe in quite some time. If it's a part of the job, then it's, it's something I guess I'll have to do. Okay. Tell me your thought process of you involved in an altercation, getting physical with, 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 with an inmate. Um, it's something that I'd be willing to do, especially if other inmates were at risk or, or I was. Uh, if you work in this line of business, it's gonna happen at some point in time. It's not if, it's a matter of when. All right, Mr. Yates, I want you to take a look at this video of the incidents that we deal with every single day. If you're thinking about becoming a member of our team, we want to show you this video. Some of this may be unsettling, but this is what we deal with on an everyday basis. <laughs> We're just gonna step Fuck you, nigga! I want what you want to! I'll be your goddamn nigga! <laughs> Hell yeah! Do your goddamn job! You monkey head motherfuckers! You relax, motherfucker. You relax, motherfucker. You relax. Yeah, I'll hold my football. I'm not taking my shoes and socks off for you. These are the type of individuals he's intoxicated coming in, do not want to comply, and so you have to, you know, we may have to use some force to get him in. Uh oh. Just trust me. Oh, yeah. Okay, security. 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 Okay, I'm not exactly looking forward to my first shift. This ends our interview for today. Okay. And here we go. Correctional officers are paid 28,000 pounds as a starting wage, well above the state average. Despite the generous package, Guildford County currently has a 20% staff shortage, 55 vacancies they simply cannot fill. The slack is picked up by the guards. Here, Overtime is the norm. 
you know what, in all honesty, I don't think I am looking forward to this. I'm excited about the prospect of the challenge, but being back in a facility like this again, and just being around those orange jumpsuits doesn't really fill me with excitement. It's gonna be a long week. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>First shift starts at six in the evening. I'll be working on bookings for the night where all new inmates get processed. I will walk you through it step by step. Learning here is done on the job and I'll be working under the guidance of training officer King, a Greensboro native with over 30 years experience working in corrections. And he has some early advice for me. Um, it's something that I call the three C's, three C's. Communication, confidence, and courtesy. Now me, courtesy is the most important thing. So when they see that you treat them as a person first, that's where you gain the respect. Hello. How are you doing? I'm Reggie. Nice to meet you, Reggie. Nice to meet you. So it's my first night. It's your first night? night? I'm working, yeah, I'm working night shift tonight. Oh, uh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Is this his very first day? Yeah, very first day. So he's like going to be under training with you? FTL. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. No better officer. Tell yeah. you. Do you remember your first night? Yeah. Do I remember it? Yeah. Scared, yeah. You know, uh, didn't know what to expect. I'm actually on booking tonight. Booking? Yeah, so okay. um, I'll be seeing people as they come in. That's a good experience because they're coming right off the streets and, you know, got to be careful though. But, uh, <laughs> all right, sir. Nice, nice to meet you. Good night, nice meeting you too. Have a good one. Take care. Be safe. Yes, sir. The only thing you're really gonna need tonight, to be honest with you, would be your handcuffs, and might need that pepper spray. They're not. This is my pepper spray? That's your pepper spray. Okay, so what are the chances I'm gonna need to use this time? I always try to talk them down first, so don't worry about that. Part. Okay. But it's good to have. That's all they'll tell you, it's good to have. That's the first oh, time yeah, I'm seeing myself. Oh yeah, you always gotta check yourself now. Wow, this is the first time I'm seeing myself in this outfit. Mm -hmm. I don't know who this geezer is. I never thought I'd be a screw. Okay. How may I help you? Greensboro is a state-of-the-art modern jail. Every door and every lift is operated remotely from a central control room. 456 cameras monitor the entire jail. Elevator four. Here, everywhere you go, someone is watching your back. So this is a uh, this is booking. It's booking, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where people come into first. Right. This is where everybody comes in. Mm -hmm. Where where I say this is where the show begins. That's where they actually bring them in. You'll hear different codes tonight. A 10-10, that's a fight. If you're not in a housing unit and you're not locked down, you're required to respond. And why do I say that? Because you never know when you're gonna call and need somebody to come. Over here. This is our dress out room. This is where they can completely undress. You have to be in here. This is very, you know, uh, important that you do that search so that he doesn't sneak anything up, you know, into the housing unit. When I first started, guys would put razors in their mouth, put their tongue down. They get to the top, they got a razor blade. They take it and put it on a toothbrush or something that can be used as a deadly weapon. And I've seen that happen. So this is the dress out room here. Okay. We'll walk over here. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you back here in the back uh, where the inmates that are being very disruptive. I'm ready for the close-up. You ready for the close-up? Yes, sir. How you doing tonight, buddy? I can break this down for you any way you want. Okay, I don't want See, you. See, I came in here to do some research, and I learned a lot in this time. Right. Right. Really? What, what? what are you? I don't see any stripes. Oh, no, no stripes. King, king. But you're the king. MLK. MLK. That's right, MLK. sir. MLK. They forgot one letter. What's that? J. What's the J? He's junior. He's small compared to me. Okay. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. I'm going to come back and talk to you a little later, all right? Okay. I am the number three. TNT. I'm Dynamite, the number three, baby, Dynamite. I appreciate it, number three. All right. All right. Okay, brother. 
Now, let's say I was, I talked to him a certain way. He would, you see, he's nice to me now. So mm. he said, I'm not a threat to him. So if, for instance, you didn't handle him well, what would the rest of your night look like with him then? Oh, I'd probably be on the door, yelling. As I always say, them three C's, though. So, you know, it, it does go a long way. Yeah, so, but we'll see him all night. Oh, we'll wait on you a little bit. Bookings is one of the busiest and most volatile places in the jail. How you doing, bud? We got here. 19,000 people yeah. pass through here every yeah. year. And it isn't long before tonight's first arrest is brought in. All right, you turn around, put your hands on the wall. You got anything in your pockets that you know about? Put your hands on the wall. Having been told by a magistrate that they must be detained, arrestees are formally handed over to the jail staff. All right, you turn around, take your shoes off, take your socks off, turn them inside out for me. All right, stick your tongue out, lift it up. All right, come on in, man. Sit right over here to the right. They're fingerprinted, assessed for threat levels, and given their orange jumpsuits. They're then locked in a group holding cell until they're ready to be taken into the main jail. From midnight onwards, the jail gets noticeably busier. So the time is now. I'm reminded that I'm now working in a system that locks up one in 100 Americans and employs nearly half a million people. Uh, turn around, put your hands on the wall. You got anything in your pockets? You want to go down the center of his back, right? And then work your way around to the front of his chest. There you go. You want to go down both sides of his legs. All right, so you can go over here and you can use the telephone right there. And we'll let you know when they have a seat or whatever. Oh, you got one coming in? It's about 10 of them over there. It's about 10 of them over there? OK, so we getting ready to rock and roll now? Mm. What's your last name, sir? Lloyd. Lloyd? What'd you do? Uh, I missed the court date. For? Uh, for paraphernalia and possession of medication without the bottle. OK, Lloyd, um, are you suicidal? Uh, are you perceived to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex, or gender non-confirming? Inside here, race, sexuality, and gang affiliations are frequently the reason behind violent attacks. Have you ever been incarcerated before? No. Separating people along these lines is just one way of keeping order. People deemed dangerous or at risk are sent to the segregation unit. OK, question is finished. All right. Last year, I went through this process myself, so I know firsthand how dehumanizing this feels. What is strange is that watching it from this side feels equally uncomfortable. I can't help but feel bad for this guy, regardless of what he might have done to end up here. Okay, so are we just waiting now for someone else to come someone through? Someone process it. Okay. Uh, 2.30, nearly 3 a.m. Like, I really am tired now. And if somebody were to test me at this point, I don't know how I'd react. I'd be worried. Really? It's late in the shift, yeah. Maybe it's because it's my first time doing this. This first day, that's all. Yeah. Got one minute ready. 10-4. As the night wears on, the inmates become rowdier, and less compliant. Uh, they stop talking. Percy, I'm gonna need number seven. All right, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna put your hands on the wall. All right, do not move till we leave. Right. Can I call my mom at some point tonight? No, you cannot. No, that's awesome. Okay. Okay. So he's gone in the holding cell. Yeah. And that's because of his behavior? Behavior over there. Being non he's being non-compliance over there. So therefore, instead of trying to process him like we would normally do, mm -hmm. Just bring him over here till he's ready. You know? So how long typically would you leave someone like him who's had a bit to drink in the whole time? Five, six hours. He can't call the bondsman. He can't call his mother. 
he will have to sit there until he sobers up, and that could be tomorrow morning. I think he's trying to get your attention. Yes, sir. Well, so the advice I can give you right now is sit down and calm down. We'll come back and later on check on you. Yeah, I'll say about an hour or two. Okay, we'll come back and check on you. All right? Okay. Hey, number three. Listen to me. If you have a seat and be quiet, thank you, sir. It's fascinating watching Officer King in action. Any one of the inmates that came through here tonight could have become violent if they weren't managed right. What he seems to know by instinct, and what I'm starting to learn, is when to be a friend, when to be a counselor, and when to be a disciplinarian. It's amazing how, um, how different an inmate's behavior is from there, there. to there. Yeah. You see how he broke down on I me? Mean, now he's starting to cry because now he sees the reality of where he is. But if you had just complied over there, well, you wouldn't be in this situation. He, he might have even been out of here right. within the hour, right? He could have been. Six is, uh, is the cutoff for my shift. Yeah. Full 12 hours. Good night, Actually, guess what? You'll see him today. I'll see you today. Yeah, you'll see him today. That's 6 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Thinking oh, back to my time as an inmate in the Texas jail, I remember quickly feeling the guards were the enemy. What's weird is, changing out of my uniform, I already feel the opposite. That the officers are the good guys, and the inmates are the people to be wary of. Just six hours later, an officer has been violently attacked on a general population pod, identical to the one I'll be working on today. Though not exactly commonplace, it's the sort of incident I've been told is not a matter of if, but when. When you hear that something like that has actually happened to one of your co-workers, does it, does it make you slightly more alert, more worried, more concerned about your shift? Does it change the mood of the building? Oh, yes, it does, it does. Yeah, what, what sort of punishment does the uh, oh, inmate who attacked the officer actually oh, get? He'll be in segregation, because that's a very serious infraction here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to check this up? Everybody want to check this up in the mirror? Before my shift starts, I ask King if I can meet the guard who was attacked. Officer Ledford was taken to hospital after the incident, but has already returned to work. Is there any way you can, you can show me the tape? Yeah. Does he sit here? Yes, that's right. Okay. So it's you going around. That's me going around, getting the non-compliant inmate from my workstation, calling my supervisor, letting them know I have an issue. And he grabs me and tries to pull me in. I did a hip toss to get him down, but then he tried to get the upper hand by putting me in a headlock is what I believe he was trying. I retrieved my OC spray at this point, sprayed him, made contact, and then delivered several punches towards his uh, facial and head area. Mm. That would be my sergeant coming in to assist me. I'm regrouping, I'm picking up my glasses, put them back on my head. I step up towards the inmate at hand, retrieve my handcuffs, and then get him restrained with the sergeant's assistance. If I wasn't worried before, seeing such a violent attack just moments before I'm due to start my shift has got me genuinely worried. Tonight I'll be working on Pod 5G, alongside two experienced guards, Officers Wallace and Pulley, who have seven years experience between them. Thank you for showing me around, man. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, um, definitely. I appreciate definitely. it. There are just three of us, guarding nearly 50 men, whose charges range from driving infractions to violent assault. I have no idea how the inmates are going to react to me. This is a, a room full of grown men. How do you make a room full of grown men do what you, on your own, are asking them to do? They all know what's expected out of them. It's just following the rules, basically. I mean, most of them have no problem with it. I mean, right now, this is pretty quiet for a pod. What is the procedure, then? If a fight kicks off right now, what do you do? So the first thing we do is call lockdown. Call on the radio. TNT, which means altercation fights and projects. 
It might be this morning's attack, but standing here, even alongside two officers, I'm acutely aware of how vulnerable I feel. I hadn't really given enough thought to the amount of time that the inmates have to consider and think and plan how to get one over on you and also how to get what they want. And they literally, they notice the smallest things, smallest things. You walking by, they could be in their cell, and hey, at the window, you got a different cologne today. They check to see your uniform. If your uniform is really wrinkled, dirty, and look, he doesn't care about his job. So yeah. most likely, we're probably gonna be able to get things out of him, the bitch, because he's here for the money. Just another day in the guilty county six, you know? So the whole time they're just focusing on what type of information they can get without, without saying anything. Mm. I give them just enough that they feel like they know me a little bit, but I don't give them too much where they can use it against me. So when it's calm like this, just hold your corner and just keep up, keep watch, right? They're gonna try you. Yeah. They're going to see, are you scared? Yeah. And they can smell it, tell a mile away if you're scared or not. Yeah. But it's about just confidence. Just believing that you can do the job and understanding that if things do happen, that we will have your back. That level of suspicion that you have to have here on the inside, does it change the way that you behave on the outside, do you think? Oh yeah. Uh, restaurants now, I always sit like back towards the wall so I can see everything in front of me. You kidding me? Yeah, because you never know. These, these guys get out. You want to go ahead and hit that round? Yeah. So it's going to be five on the bottom okay. and four up top. All right. I'll do the bottom first and I'll go back up. All right. Every 30 minutes, the officers use an electronic recorder linked to a central database to mark that they have checked each cell. It's an official record timestamping that all inmates are safe. Bully says to act confident, but suddenly isolated from my fellow officers, I'm certainly not feeling at ease. A bit of a weird one, really. Because in terms of paranoia, this moment isn't very nice because What's to stop an inmate running in after you and slamming the door shut and then suddenly it's just two of you in the red yard locked in, you know? I think more people are sort of seeing my face and trying to size me up a little, see how I react, see how comfortable I am. That's cool though, it's to be expected, right? On top of the attack on the guard, this pod saw a violent clash during the night, which has seen the attacker sent to segregation. His victim remains here, under close supervision. So you were, you were fighting earlier. Do you mind telling me what that was over? What happened? Well, dude, dude was watching out the door. He got the door cracked, dog. He was watching out the door. He waits for me to turn my back. Were you expecting the officers to come in and, and, and help? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were. How long was it before the officers arrived out? Immediately. Yeah. So in your opinion, what makes a good officer then? Good officer, somebody that treats you like a human being. As an inmate, you earn their respect, you know what I mean? Because they don't trust you. It's like we don't trust them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, trust is earned, not given. You know what I mean? It's beginning to feel like there's a constant threat of violence in here. I'm increasingly aware that no matter how calm things might seem, as a guard, you can never truly relax. As the dust settles on this morning's incident, Pulley and I conduct cell searches. He's working on one side, I work on one side. And I'm doing this strip in his bed, and mm. when you strip the bed and shake it everything, then you show that nothing's not hidden. Mm. And then, a lot of inmates are particular. For example, this is contraband. Suit cut, they're not allowed. Suit cuts in their room. The reason why is they can actually put urine or feces in this cup and throw it out. So what sort of things have you found on the shakedown then? Um, I said, we found marijuana, cell phones, cell phones, yeah. cigarettes, anything. Where would they hide a cell phone in the cell? They have like some type of, make a like, concoction of like toothpaste. Um, I don't remember the exact ingredients, but they're trying to hide up here, up here. Like they're just pretty, pretty much anywhere. One of these are going in the trash, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe we go straight to the trash. You want to check, you know, open the containers, 
Because let's say they want to stash weed in there and yeah. shake it up, it's no way you know. Yeah. And as soon as we leave, they just knock it back out. Hey, why you put already? Like many of the officers here, Pulley was born and raised in North Carolina, a state where 22% of residents are African American. Yet more than 70% of the inmates here are black. I've got to ask you this, man. As a, as, a, as a young black guy yourself, you know, the numbers of young black men incarcerated, even here in this pod, they're, they're overwhelming. Oh, yeah, definitely. So definitely. why do you think you ended up wearing this uniform and not an orange one? I had a great mom. My mom, she pretty much told me always follow the rules. Um, I just always thought it was an honor position. I always wanted to be an honor enforcement. Do you think there's a stigma against the job if you are a, a young black guy? Oh, definitely. definitely. Sometimes they look at you as um, a traitor. They're like, hey, man, you're black. You're supposed to be nicer to us. You know, I don't know what your crime is. I don't know whether you're innocent or not guilty. You know, that's guilty or not guilty. That's not up to me. I'm not the judge or the jury. You know, my job is to make sure you follow the rules and that you're safe in here. By 11 p.m., the inmates have had three hours out of their cells. It's time for lockdown. All right, gentlemen, 11 o'clock lockdown, please, gentlemen. I don't know if that many people were supposed to laugh. <laughs> All right, fellas, I already said it's time to lock down. If I'm in here tomorrow, don't be surprised if you don't come out at 8 o'clock. Get off the goddamn Doing this on my own, I'm not entirely sure if I'd be uh, great at it. I mean, this is an intimidating environment. You know, you've got a lot of people in here who are watching your every move. And for somebody like myself, I think I'd have to be a little bit more forceful and um, a lot more stern for me to be heard and, and respected, unfortunately. I'm starting to learn that officers have to be constantly vigilant. And I wonder if the chronic staff shortages are making these pressures worse. The thing that I would struggle with most if I was doing your job would be um, the hours. I worked 12 hours a day for almost a year straight. And that's, that's overtime? Mm hmm Wow. Statistically, I've even read that that takes years off your life. It's, it, 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 it takes a toll. I mean, I don't necessarily fear working in here, but I mean, if you really think about it, if these guys really wanted to take over, it's what, 40 of them only like wanted me. So if they all just came and ganged up on me, it's just not really too much I can do, you know what I'm saying? All right, fellas, I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and get these lights. I knew that this job puts you in the firing line, that you might be attacked at any time. What I hadn't realized until today was the mental toll it takes. In America, correctional officers have a higher than average rate of mental health problems and are nearly twice as likely to commit suicide. I think tonight was a, a real eye-opener. Looking after 50 inmates at one go is difficult enough, let alone watching what you say being careful and cautious about how you present yourself and also how much you let them in. You know, there's so much to consider, so much to think about that they're on constantly from the minute that they walk into the pod. And that isn't an easy job at all. It's Easter Sunday, and after last night, I'm relieved to have a day off. Officer King has invited me to go to church with him, and I'm looking forward to getting to know the man behind the uniform. How you doing, sir? Good to see you, sir. You too. Uh -huh. You too. You're looking sharp. Oh, you're looking a little sharp yourself. There. <laughs> so you've got a pretty, uh, pretty scary accessory oh, there. Ah, well, you know. I try to take care of myself when I'm outside of this. Yeah, no kidding. That's uh, the last thing I expected to see on your belt. Really? In church. So do you normally carry whenever you're out of the, uh, the jail then? Yes. Everywhere you go? Pretty much. 
seeing you wear that uh, in church sort of says to me that you're almost you're almost on duty. You're not off. You're not you're not relaxed. Oh, I'm always relaxed. Officer King was born and raised in one of the poorer parts of Greensboro, a city with neighborhoods among the most deprived in America, and where violent crime is almost twice the national average. It must be weird knowing the people you're locking up might once have been your neighbors. In terms of the people that you see coming through the door mm -hmm. at the jail, mm -hmm. how many would you say on it, in terms of percentage would come from this area? Oh. Uh, uh, probably 70% of them. So having a, a history in the tougher corners of this area, do you think that gives you an upper hand in the job? Just to be able to relate to some of what they have gone through, yes. This is our church here. This is the church? This is the church. I'm aware that when he's working, Officer King is presenting a certain image to the world. So it's interesting to hear him open up here. But I'm still intrigued as to why he feels the need to carry a gun, even to church. So your family are going to be where today during the year? So. Um, some will be in the service, uh, some may be over here. So I don't want anyone to walk up to them and possibly, you know, assault them or grab them based off of maybe something that I had to redirect them you know, in the jail. You're concerned that a former inmate could spot your family or get to know who you're right. connected to. Too. The congregation is large, so you really never know what could happen. I know that I follow the rules, and most people, especially inmates, you know, they don't always want to follow rules. Scale of one to 10, what's the threat level, do you think? Up to me, about a nine. Should we head in? Yeah. Let's go in. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good. All right. Hey, how you doing, brother? Uh, What's going on, man? What's up, man? How you doing? All right, this is Ed right here. This is Reggie. It's Reggie, good yeah. to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. Glad to have you, man. Thanks for having me. All right, all right. Yes, sir. After spending three days at the jail, I've learned that during a 12-hour shift, you can't afford to switch off, even for a second. But a threat level of nine in church suggests Officer King finds it hard to relax, even when he's off duty. But what toll does it take spending your working life watching your back? How has that stress sort of uh, manifested itself? Has it affected any of your relationships? Well, as far as relationship, it does. My daughter, her mother, when she lives in Florida, you know, uh, she just could never really accept what I did. If you don't have a real support system where your wife, your family really accepts what you do, it's, got, it's, it's not just tough in the community, but at home. So the job got in the way of your relationship? Yeah, you know, and, and my daughter, she would ask like, well, why would I want to work in a place like that? And, Someone can hurt you or walk up on us and, and hurt us. All right, man, I'm gonna let you get some rest because you've got another night another right, shift. Another 12, another 12. <laughs> okay, man. Thank Take you care. so much. Thank yes, you. sir. Happy Easter to you, too, brother. Okay, happy Easter. All right. They get new recruits. I don't know who's going to be up at this ungodly hour to hear that, but <laughs> well, it seems like he's got the right idea. Whatever it takes, I guess. I'm heading back to the jail for another 12 hour shift. I'll be spending the day on pod 3B, a general housing unit that has a reputation for being rowdy. Let's do it. I've been paired with Officer Owens, 
one of about 70 female officers working within the jail. So how long have you worked in this jail? Um, nine months. How do you feel going into one of those pods? I feel like uh, a lot of the guys know me anyways. Um, I've sort of developed a reputation. <laughs> for what, exactly? Sending guys out for being disrespectful. And so by sending out, what do you mean? Segregation. Right. Sending them to segregation. So, um, usually I try to give people a chance, or a few chances, um, but it definitely depends as to what level of disrespect uh, they show. So what are we talking about? Masturbating, um, cussing me out, things like that is, uh, are usually segregation. So what are you like in your, uh, in your normal life? Um, I'm kind of an introvert, kind of a shy person actually. Yeah. Shall Ready? Yeah. So how does Owens, someone who stands at five foot two and describes herself as naturally shy, keep control while surrounded by 50 volatile, potentially violent young men. We are taking over for a little while. So you have, currently you got 43 on post. Currently we were about to start conducting the cleanup. The day begins with cell cleaning, a task the inmates undertake themselves. Now I let out um, four per tier at a time because you don't want all the guys out. You only have a limited number of cleaning supplies. So you, don't, you don't need everybody out. If you want to clean, press your button. This one. This one. This one. From the start of the day, the atmosphere in here feels much more challenging. No, no, we gonna have a good day today. I hope so. When they say, "Are we gonna have a good day today?" They mean you're gonna let me get away with stuff. Or you're gonna let me do what I want to do today. And uh, so I just say. I hope we're going to have a good day, but that all depends on you. You want to clean? Yeah. Okay, give me just a minute and I'll pop your door. So that you've got a, a real handle on this. <laughs> you know how this thing works. How long did you... Um... Fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah, well, how long were you faking it? I can't say I've stopped, to be honest. Um, I still don't feel as confident as I try to portray. I'm gonna need you to roll those pants down. Trash bag, toilet bag. So generally, how would the inmates test you then? Um, just to see if you stay on your ground. Like I told that guy to roll his pants down, he hadn't done it yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give him a few more minutes. I'm gonna tell him again. Hold on. Don't walk away with that screen up, okay? You need to do what I tell you to do. Don't test me today. Me too. Yeah. You... Mate, you fill that one up and come back and get the second one, all right? Hmm? Fill that one up and come back and get the second one, all right? <laughs> I think that was a little cheeky test. Lockdown. Lockdown. You're not coming out today. Anybody else? I just locked a guy down for the day. You locked someone down? Disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, you missed that. What happened? Um, well, I said, stand by your door if you want to clean up. They never moved. I said it two more times, never moved. So he's locked down for the whole day? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which cell was that? 11. Mm. They're about to lose their whole morning rack hour. They keep this up. Oh, really? If you guys want to come out this morning, I recommend you stop yelling out. All right, we have to get a round in. If you'd like to do that, yeah, for sure. I'll give you the pipe. Start the round and go. Yeah. yeah. Owens locks down the inmates so quickly. If you're just waiting on your floor to dry, I need you to go ahead and shut your door. It's not a punishment I've seen used in the jail before. Y'all not coming out this morning. But in her position, I'm not sure I'd be taking any risks either. You got two guys down the one. Yep. Two. two. They know the rules. Mm. They're just trying to see what they can get away with. Mm. Do you think you've got a reputation for being a hard officer? I think most females do. If you have a male and a female officer in a housing unit with males, they're going to approach the male. Mm. Why do you think that is? 
a lot of guys don't like taking instructions from women. <laughs> Yes. Can I get some salt? I'll bring you some on my next round. And I need some toilet paper too. Okay. And a toothbrush. Now you might have to get all that when you come out. Well look, I also need to take a shower. I ain't taking no shower in there. I'm two days. We're finished cleaning up this morning. Your cellmate kind of ruined that for you. Do you still get offended when you're working? I still don't. Enjoy, you know, being called a bitch. <laughs> How do you manage to keep a uh, smile on your face? Uh, you don't Scarlet find it. Day. You don't find it glamorous. <laughs> no, sorry, you can get it when you come out. Do you want to come out? Okay. Halfway through the shift, I take one of the inmates across the jail for their appearance in front of a judge. I'm gonna escort you down to your court appearance as well. I take the opportunity to try and find out how inmates feel about Owen's hardline approach. You've got uh, an officer who is really, really hard on you guys. Have you ever considered as to why she might be doing that? For one, she's a female. And another thing she's She's Caucasian in a predominantly African American field facility. So for your wife and your and your woman, they're not gonna listen, to, they're gonna learn. As a black man and as a black inmate, when you see a new white officer come in, how do you think they're looking at you? Some of them are compassionate. Some of them are in addition to the problem. Some of them look at it as just a job. You have to deal with people. Like right? you have to be a people person to deal with people. If you're not a people person, you can't. I just don't see the point in it. It's interesting to hear it from an inmate. Officers like Owens are given a much harder time here, simply because of who they are. An added pressure, it's not easy to overcome. Why go? Part two. You called me. Back on the pod, tensions are already running high and all the inmates are about to be released from their cells for recreation time. So it's the big rush for phones, right? Yep. Phones and showers. <laughs> it seems like there's mass relief to yeah. be out of their cells, right? Yeah. Mr. Moore, you got a shower downstairs. You do it, you're not coming out this afternoon. What, what, sorry, why they're not you allowed on the upper tier if they're not assigned to that level. So you're gonna lock him down for the rest of the day? I am. Yep, as soon as he showers, he's done. Mm. So how many inmates do you have on lockdown at the moment? Six. Is that normal for one of your shifts? Or is that a... That's a little high. Yeah. It's a little high. I'd say uh, two or three usually per shift. Mm -hmm. um, there have been days when um, I locked everybody down. Mm. Everybody's having a bad day. This is jail. Busy shift. Officer Owens. Whoa. Feeling stressed? Oh, well, that just happened. This is really, really difficult. This is so difficult because you are just being challenged constantly. It's, you know, for want of a better example, you know, it's like looking after a lot of kids. It is, yes. Kids with um, assault charges and robbery with firearms and, and things of that nature. Yeah. So, you just have to be careful. I found today's shift really challenging, but it's only been one day. Owens has been doing this for nine months. You know, I was thinking earlier, I fucking hate you. <laughs> after that shift, well, directly after coming out of the pod, I was thinking, this is just as hard, if not harder, than being an inmate. 
It's all shit. Just in different ways. It's my last day working in the jail, which I'll spend in the segregation unit. But before my shift begins, I've been given the chance to speak to Major Williamson, the head of the jail, who's been working in North Carolina corrections for three decades. Hey, how you doing, Major? All right, all right. How's it going? Good, good. Good to see you again. Good. I found my week here tougher than expected. I don't get why anyone would want to spend their working life here. You know, if you go to a third grade class and say, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Not many of them say, probably none of them say, I want to work in a jail. The challenge there is getting people to see the job as a critical uh, aspect of the criminal justice system. You got to be as, as aggressive as we are in recruiting. Given the amount of African-American men that you have behind bars here, do you think you're seeing enough African-American recruits wanting to be a part of the solution? I, 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 as far as African-American males, no. If you're an African-American, when you go home and you tell your, your wife, your mother, your friends, hey, I'm gonna work for the sheriff's department, there's people who've, who say, hey man, why, why are you doing that? You know, you, maybe, you, you sure you're not selling out a little bit? Why do you think African-American uh, officers are important? Well, obviously, it's just like any, any other social entity. Uh, you know, when you, when you see a person who looks like you, maybe you're a little more open to listening to them, you know, understand how to talk to them, all those things make a difference. So, now, if you decide you want to stay... It's clear that recruitment, particularly of African-American officers, is the main challenge facing Guilford County Jail. With numbers so low, it's up to the current employees to pull their weight and make up the hours. This morning, I'm working with Officer Pulley again, this time on the segregation unit. The inmates on this pod are too dangerous to mix with the general population. They're only allowed out of their cells for an hour a day, and only then, in chains. How many officers will man this pod then? Uh, it's two officers. Yeah, we could be at two officers, just because of safety. Mm -hmm. just, because of, just because of safety. I have one of the inmates calling you out saying you're trying to act serious. That t sounds, to me, sounds as though they know you, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, what is there to be done on the pod this evening? Um, right now, we got a couple guys that uh, they get their hour out, as Philly was uh, mm -hmm. describing and everything. Uh, actually, we have one guy right here, 20. He's a suicide watch. As you can tell, he's got his jumpsuit on outside. Pretty much we can't trust him with anything right. uh, inside his cell. Right at the moment, he literally has nothing but a blanket. That's so he has. he's put his jumpsuit outside of his cell? Oh, we actually done that uh, per sergeant. So. so what is he wearing? The blanket. Right. So we'll let him do the next round. We'll let him do the next round. Next one? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Doing the rounds, I'm struck by just how relaxed and affable Pulley is even on a unit housing the jail's most intimidating inmates. I've also noticed a familiar sound. Number three, the vocal inmate from my night in bookings, is the person who's had the contents of his cell removed. See, when I was doing my rounds, mm -hmm. in the far corner I noticed um, someone I saw when I when I was working booking. Mm -hmm. Remember yes, the booking. guy's calling himself number three? Oh, yes. So he's in here now? Oh, yes, he's in here now. He's asking segregation for turning up his sheets, uh, fighting officers, um, spitting, throwing feces, masturbating. He's pretty much broke everything. Once they started, they're going to ask right. I said, you're going to treat me right. What was your charge? Why would you want to take your own life? For attention. It was never really suicide. 
Okay. All right, well, look. Good talking to you, man. Look after yourself in here, all right? What's your name, officer? Take it easy. Look after yourself in here. Okay, I'm Yates, okay? All right, sir. The last time I saw the inmate who calls himself number three was on my first shift. I felt wary of him at the time, and I was a bit embarrassed by that. Hey, Norman. Somebody coming out? One week later, I, I don't feel as phased by it, but I now know that that feeling, being wary, is a good thing. It's what keeps you safe. Thank you, Buff. You're doing your push-ups, huh? Thank you, you, thank you, Buff. You don't get in some weight? You're getting big, though, man. You get, I, see, I see it in your arms, chest. You know, you're getting big again. This guy right here, good guy. He always joking with me. Call him Buff Ninja Turtle. <laughs> he gonna put on some muscle since he be here. You the only dude I know and said display in nah display in fashion for trying to smuggle in a wig and a toupee. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. Do you know, do you know the, the funny thing is just seeing you guys talk to each other? I think if neither of you were wearing these uniforms and you met in a bar or something, you'd yeah, probably we, be we, friends. We, we, yeah, yeah, you'd be friends, right? Yeah. yeah we're about the same age. Pulley has a natural empathy for inmates that they clearly respond to. It makes working with them feel easy. And it's a great way to end my time here at the jail. Right, Pulley, ready? Take care, man. Your relationship with the inmates is definitely different to every other new officer or younger officer that I've seen. You have a real shorthand with them. Yes. Um, and to me, it seems as though you're trying to and I make their stay easier, mm -hmm. or at least help them in some way. Would that be fair? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I feel like I'm definitely helping because when they come in, I don't judge. I immediately say, hey, I've been there. You know, I may not have done the crimes you've done, but I've seen the struggle. And at the end of the day, you can change that. You know, I just always try to remember that we are human beings mm -hmm. and that you give respect, you will get it. Can we try and find him? Yeah. 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 Before I leave, I want to track down Officer King to say my goodbyes. I'm nearly out of here. I'm yeah. nearly all done, nearly. Okay. Nearly all done, how are you? Look, with all of the challenges that face you as an officer, why do you keep coming back? Because I want to make a difference in somebody's life. Male, female, Caucasian, African American, doesn't matter to me, I want to be able to make a difference. But I think you've done a fabulous job. Being six days, I've been looking tired right now. A little undershaved, look a little rough around the edges. I'm telling you, I'll be all over you right now. You look a little rough. Thank you so much, man. All right. All right, bro. Head out. Good to see you, man. Take look, care. you got my number now. Yes, sir. So, you know, you can give me a call every now and then. All right. And don't pepper spray nobody. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. All right, thank you. Take off, King. All right, man. It's been a hard and often exhausting week. Correctional officers work long hours and they deal with some of the most dangerous elements in society. Day in, day out. This job isn't fun or all glamorous, but it's important. In the age of Black Lives Matter, it matters that it's done well. And so I've got nothing but respect for the people who are trying to dedicate their careers to it. See, I thought being an inmate would be the more mentally taxing. But you're outnumbered if you're an officer. And the power isn't something that comes automatically. That's something that you have to earn. But you're also being tested. And you're also being sized up every minute of every hour of every shift. With close to 50 men, all wanting to try you, whether you're a man or a woman, is my idea of help and I won't be going back anytime soon.